Monotubs. They're simple, highly effective ways to cultivate mushrooms indoors discreetly with minimal infrastructure and minimal cost. In this video, we'll take you through the full process of making a monotub, including cultivating and creating your own master grain spawn and optional upgrades for your monotub to take your grow to the next level. Hey, I'm Kevin. I'm here with North Spore, and today we're gonna to talk about monotub cultivation, which is a really simple at-home cultivation method. It's how a lot of professional growers get their start. And what we're gonna do is use a pasteurized manure substrate to grow oyster mushrooms today. And you can grow a wide variety of mushrooms, different types of agaricus, shaggy manes, uh, so on and so forth, using this method and this substrate. So let's go over some of the materials we're gonna need for this. For monotub cultivation, you're gonna start with a tub. This is a clear 70 quart Sterilite container. Any similar plastic container will work. We're gonna use black spray paint to spray paint the bottom half of this tub. That'll keep your substrate dark. If you use a dark one, you're going to want to have a window or some sort of lighting system involved. We're gonna use a two inch hole saw on a power drill. We're gonna use this to drill holes into the side of the monotub. We're gonna stuff those holes with a polyfill. We're gonna secure that polyfill with duct tape. We're gonna fill the monotub with our bulk substrate. In this case, we're using boomer bags. We're gonna have two spray bottles one with 70% isopropyl alcohol, one with water. We're gonna have our colonized bag of oyster mushroom grain spawn. If you wanted to make your own grain spawn, and we'll go into this more later, you can purchase our sterilized grain bags with injection ports, and that way you can inject your liquid culture, whether it's spores or a mycelial culture, directly into the grain to make it grain spawn. And of course, you're gonna want rubber gloves and labels and a Sharpie, keep track of things. And we're gonna case it all with coconut cloth. All right, so let's hop into our flow hood, start the process of making our grain spawn with a spore culture or a liquid culture. Could be tissue, could be spores. So we're in our flow hood. It's a HEPA air filtered flow hood with positive pressure, so it's gonna keep everything real clean. When you unbox your grain, just make sure to check your bag for any rips or tears or holes. If there is anything like that, let us know. We'll take care of it for you. Uh, spray your hands down with alcohol, spray your forearms down with alcohol. You wanna just keep this place as sterile as possible. You really can't use too much. Wipe your surfaces down. Wipe your hands down again, and then we're gonna start sterilizing this bag by spraying it with rubbing alcohol, and then getting some on our hands and kind of getting it into the little nooks and crannies that are all over this bag. Again, you can't be too sterile, so just keep going. If you're not sure, you're not sterile enough. So that's our injection port right there, and that's where our liquid culture is gonna go. So you wanna take your liquid culture, tilt it up and down a few times. That's gonna disperse any spores or culture evenly throughout the liquid. Spray down a piece of paper towel and wipe down your spore syringe, everything that you can. This is all sterile technique, so pay attention to the process here. Notice how we didn't touch the needle at all at any point and kept it into the packaging for as long as possible. Now you're gonna to wanna to flame sterilize the tip and now it's ready to go into the injection port. Clean it off before you put it in and then kind of angle it downwards slightly. That'll get your liquid culture into a moister area of the bag with a little more water in the grain and it's gonna spread a little faster that way. These injection ports are self-sealing, so you don't have to worry about contamination coming in afterwards. So now you wanna leave it and let it sit to start colonizing. If you get to a certain point, you can take your bag and break it up, break up all that mycelium and spread it around and disperse it more evenly through your bag. Let it sit and let it fully colonize. Now you're gonna get a more even uh, colonization rate and a faster colonization rate. Now we have our ready grain spawn. It's all white, it's cohesive, it's kind of just like a brick. It's ready to go. So the first step is we're gonna take our tub and we're gonna spray paint it. And we're spray paint the bottom half of it black. And the reason why we do that is because though mushrooms are not photosynthetic, they are photosensitive. And so the light is gonna influence how they grow. So if we didn't spray paint this, 
You'd have mushrooms fruiting down here. They'd be fruiting on the bottom. They'd be unharvestable, but they'd still be using your valuable substrate. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take this outside because we don't wanna spray paint inside. So we're outside of our facility. We're in downtown Westbrook, Maine right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by using this tape to make some nice clean lines to prevent the paint from bleeding. Now that the tub is taped, we're gonna start spray painting. So make sure you give it a good shake. We're ready to start. So we just spray painted our tote, brought it back inside. It's pretty dry now, so we can start to remove the tape. Technically unnecessary, but we're just hoping for a nice clean line and hoping that it looks good. So I'm gonna start pulling this tape off right here. So our tub is painted, the tape is off and we are ready for the next step, which is drilling holes in the side. So again, we're using a two inch hole saw right here on a power drill. And this part is one of the trickier parts. It's really easy to crack the plastic. So you need to have it going at a high speed without like any pressure on it. You just want the teeth to do the work without any of your own pressure involved. So we're gonna do two on each of these sides and one on each of these sides. And we're doing this to allow airflow because we need ventilation. Because as the mushrooms start colonizing the substrate, they're gonna be releasing carbon dioxide. Too much carbon dioxide is gonna result in no fruiting or really deformed fruiting. Time to start drilling. So again, you're gonna be really, really careful. Make sure your drill is in forward and not backwards. So the edges, uh, they're a little rough, so we're just gonna trim these up as best we can with the utility knife, just to make it all a little more smooth. Just like that. Just keep doing this to all the holes. You just wanna keep things looking good. It also minimizes the space where there could be gaps for air that's not going through the polyfill. So we got our holes drilled, we cleaned them up. Now we're gonna put our polyfill in. And this kind of acts as like a very simple air filter to help keep unwanted spores and whatnot out. So we just stuff it in the hole. You want a nice big handful, like a big clump in there. You can see it's kind of coming out that side too. That's all right. All right, another one. We've got our holes filled with the polyfill, and now we're gonna tape around the edges of the polyfill. And we do that primarily just to keep the polyfill from falling out unexpectedly. We'll come around the edge here, kind of just doing a square. If you look under the, the video, you'll find some links for some of this stuff, like the polyfill. Uh, there's links for other resources too, and we have a bunch of information on our website as well. All right, last little bit on this one. Doesn't look that pretty. Good thing the mushrooms don't care. Oops. 
So your tub's all ready, your batting, the polyfill is in the holes. It's all covered up, it's taped, it looks secure. So now comes one of the most important parts and that's sterilizing your container. And that includes sterilizing the space that you're in and it includes sterilizing all of your materials that you're gonna attach from here on out. If we weren't doing this video, we'd probably be in a much smaller clean room. This room is large, it's really, it'd be really hard to clean and keep sterile, but for the sake of making this video, we're gonna make it work. This is where everything can go wrong in this. You've already put all this time into making your tub, so let's make sure we do it right. And how we do that is primarily with isopropyl alcohol. Plain old rubbing alcohol, this is a 70%, and I'm gonna put on gloves now. This is the part where we want to be very clean. And again, if we were doing this at home ourselves, we would try to be in a much smaller room and a much cleaner room. And if you had a room that you say wanted to vacuum to make cleaning, that's great. But if you're just vacuuming, you're gonna spread a bunch of stuff in the air. So you wanna have some sort of ventilation system, maybe like a HEPA filter. There's varying degrees of low to high tech you can go with this. A lot of people just like really cleaning their bathroom and doing it in the bathroom. And that works really well for a lot of reasons. One, because it's really small. Two, because there's not a lot of porous surfaces in the bathroom. Three, because it's easy to clean and keep clean. Let's just pretend we're in a bathroom right now. Isopropyl evaporates, uh, which is really convenient. So I just like to spray everything down. So we're gonna really get in there. And I'll hold this up for you. you kind of see. We're just getting all in there. These little crevices here, you wanna make sure those are all covered. We're getting that polyfill too. Spraying the bottom, we're getting all in there. We're smelling the rubbing alcohol. We know it's there, it's working. So I usually like to just let this air dry. Um, as it evaporates, it'll help disinfect everything around it. I'll take the top of this, spray that down just to be extra careful. You can even do the outside of your container. You might as well. You're not gonna make anything too sterile ever. You know, we're on a tablecloth right now. If you were doing this at home, you'd want some sort of non-porous surface, one that you can easily disinfect. I would totally wipe this down too. Let's assume that we're just in a nice clean space right now. So I'm gonna start doing my hands now, going down my arms a bit, really getting in there. There's spores on everything all of the time. It's really easy to grow fungus. You just wanna make sure it's the fungus you wanna grow. Now we're going to start putting our substrate into our tub. We're gonna use three of these. So we're gonna open up these boxes. There's one, there's two. Best to keep these in the box for as long as you can. Helps keep unwanted stuff from getting on them. Some of these bags, you might notice that they're a little firm, a little like a brick. And that's just normal from them condensing and being put in the autoclave. So what we're gonna do is in the bag, break up the substrate. It's much easier this way. It's a lot less messy and you're gonna have hopefully no incidents of contamination by doing it this way. Whereas if you were doing it after the bag was open, uh, you'd be asking for trouble. All right, that, that one feels pretty good. This one, not quite as condensed, looking good. This one, kind of in the middle. So now we're gonna sterilize the outsides of these bags. Not being shy about the amount of isopropyl we use. So our bags have been sprayed, they're sterile. Spray the hands again. Make sure they're nice and clean. We have our substrate ready to get put in. Let's take a look at our grain spawn. So you can see here, this is really nicely colonized. This is, again is our oyster mushroom grain spawn. As you saw earlier, if you wanted to make your own grain spawn using the injection ports, using some type of liquid culture, you can definitely do that and that's what these are for. But we're gonna be using this oyster mushroom spawn. It's fully colonized. You can tell because it, it's all white and it looks great, looks real happy. And again, with this, super important that we spray it down. But before we do that, we wanna break this up too. And you wanna break it up really as best as you can. Each one of these little pieces of grain is essentially a seed. So the more broken up it is, the more distributed in the substrate it's gonna be, and the better rates of colonization you're gonna have. So be real gentle with your grain spawn. Um, you don't wanna puncture the bag. You just gotta love it a little bit. So I'm gonna gently squeeze in the sides. Squeeze that, I'll put it down. Just kind of massage the bag, break up all that grain. Getting out all those clumps, 
So there's our grain spawn all broken up. It looks a lot different all of a sudden. We're gonna definitely spray the outside of this bag too. Very important. So this is our utility knife. We're gonna spray the outside of this, open up the blade, get in there. And now we're ready to cut open some bags. Slowly and carefully and gently remove the lid off of our tub. And so we want to layer the grain and the substrate and the grain and the substrate. And the reason why we wanna do that instead of maybe just mixing it all together is because we're gonna minimize the air contact it has. We're gonna minimize the contact with our hands that it has and hopefully by doing that, minimize overall any sort of contamination that we might experience. But we're only gonna open one bag of substrate at a time. We're gonna try to do this as quickly and effectively and cleanly as possible. We'll start by opening up the grain spawn. So we're gonna add a real thin layer of grain spawn to the bottom of our tub. So I'm gonna sterilize my hands again real quick because we're gonna talk about something called field capacity of your substrate. So when I look at the substrate in here, I'm gonna wanna take a handful and I'm just gonna wanna squeeze it as hard as I can. I should be able to get a drop or two of water out of there. Feeling a little bit coming between my fingers, but not that much. Now we try to make everything as even as possible here, but there's always gonna be variations in the relative moisture of your substrate. This is a little dry, so I'm going to take the water spritzer, and I'm just gonna do two, three, four, maybe five or six sprays in there, just to add a little bit more moisture. All right, I'm gonna test it again. Give it another squeeze real hard. Oh, couple drops, just like that. It's perfect, it's exactly what we wanted. You don't want it to be too wet, it's too wet, there won't be enough oxygen, and you'll grow a lovely batch of green mold. I'm gonna spread this out very gently just to cover up, kind of make a nice even layer on the bottom as best as I can. You can kind of break up chunks, but again, you really want to minimize your contact. And add another layer of grain spawn on top of here. You just want to maximize the surface area of the substrate in contact with the grain spawn. I'm just gonna move this lid off to the side for the moment, and we'll sterilize that again for sure. We're doing a nice layer in here. Spreading it out just a little bit. All right, we're gonna do our second bag of substrate now. And again, we're using three in this particular example. And we're just gonna gently sprinkle this back on top, adding that second layer of substrate. So right now we have a layer of grain spawn on the bottom, a layer of substrate, a layer of grain spawn, and now the second layer of substrate. Again, spritz the hands real quick. Gently spread this around, just covering it all back up. Do a quick check of the field capacity because it's a different bag. Give it a squeeze. Oh, that one feels perfect. So we're gonna just keep going with that one. And now we can add our next layer of spawn. And the thing with grain spawn is once you open it, unless you're in a really sterile space, and you can really reseal it properly, uh, you're just gonna wanna use all of it at once. We're gonna save this little bit to throw on top. Quick sterilization of this bag again, quick sterilization of the knife again. Come through, opening up this third and final bag of substrate. Do a quick check. Feeling water, maybe a little dry, but not too bad. Just a you just to moisten the top up there. Now we haven't really been mixing the other layers, but for the top, we're gonna just gently mix it in, just kind of get that grain spawn a little more in contact with the substrate, minimize its contact with the air where it's not gonna be able to grow. So we're just kind of gently, gently going in here. So all of our spawn is mixed in, all of our substrate is in here. Everything's looking real good. One final step I wanna do is just spray down the edges, the tops again with some alcohol. All right, so now we're gonna take our lid 
which I had off to the side. I'm gonna spray it down again. So we're gonna take this lid, we're gonna put it right back on the top, and we're gonna close it shut. One thing you're gonna be looking at here is a certain amount of humidity that's gonna come up and condense on the top. That's gonna be a good indicator of the health of the colony and how your mushrooms are doing. So you wanna see some condensation inside of here. That's how you know it's gonna be at the right moisture level. You're also gonna really, really, really wanna take this lid off like five times a day. It's really important that you just don't do that. Every time you open the lid, you're introducing new contaminants, new spores, all sorts of stuff, and you're altering the humidity as well. So really the best way to do it is to try to just peek in through the top or peek in through the sides, doing your best to just, oh, really not open it, even though it's really exciting. At this point, we basically just wait. It's been a couple weeks. Our tub is nicely colonized. We even have some little baby pins on there already. So it's time to start casing our substrate. And I mentioned before, we're gonna use this cocoa coir. This is just the variety we use. It's washed, it's loose, it's really easy to work with. It's one of the great reasons to use it. Largely, it just keeps moisture in the substrate that's colonized, and it helps keep an ambient moisture higher for the fruiting mushrooms so they don't dry out and stop growing. There's some other reasons. Other types of mushrooms and tubs will enjoy a casing as well. So as we're looking at our tub, two weeks later, we can see it's just a really nice white mat of mycelium here. You can see how it's kind of pulled the substrate away from the edges. It's really just one brick right now. It's fully colonized, and you can start to see these little pins starting to form now. So these are kind of conglomerates of mycelium that are gonna form the fruiting bodies, which we ultimately harvest. If you look over here, you can see this exudate. This is a sign of healthy metabolism inside the mycelium. And you can also see how it's kind of hydrophobic, that water right there, that exudate, it's not sinking in, it's being held above it. And so that is one of the other indicators for having a nice healthy culture. And you can see by looking at this, it's hydrophobic, it's fully colonized. This is gonna be really good at resisting any type of contamination at this point in the process. And we're gonna put about one to two inches on top of here. You know, there's some small clumps there, that's all right. It's nothing serious. I'm just kind of gently putting it on. Now, we're gonna smooth it out. It's kind of a bigger chunk, I'll break this up a bit. So now we're just gonna smooth it out, covering the substrate, nice and gentle. Getting into the corners, letting it fill in wherever it is. You don't really wanna see any mycelium at all at this point. We've got a nice even layer of our casing, the coca coir, and now the next step is to just hydrate it, and we're gonna use this spray bottle. And you just, it takes a little while. You just keep going. The idea is to saturate the casing to the point that it's moist enough for the mycelium to break through and also that it maintains enough moisture for the mushrooms, the mature mushrooms that we're trying to grow here. I like to use a spray bottle because instead of just pouring water on top of it, um, you're getting a nice even concentration across the surface that's gonna sink in. If you just sprinkle water on it, you might have parts where it just drips through the casing right into the mycelium and that's not ideal. So this is a good way to do it. So our casing is properly hydrated. We spritzed it enough. So now the time comes to put the lid back on top of it and leave it a little bit cracked. The mushrooms themselves, what we harvest, they like to have a little bit more airflow, a little bit more oxygen, a little bit lower carbon dioxide. So keeping the lid cracked is gonna help us do that. And we just wanna make sure we spritz it once or twice a day, just kind of maintain that humidity level in the casing. And that's it. Keep an eye on it, see how it's going, and then you wait until you harvest. So this is a really basic monotub. It's about as basic as it gets, and that's why it's so good. If you are interested, we're gonna show you how to pimp your tub a little bit, make it a little more exciting, a little more automated. Uh, we can have lights in here, we can have humidity regulation, we can do all of this stuff pretty easily, and we'll show you how to do that too. It's been a couple weeks since we cased our substrate. We can see we've got some really nice mature oyster mushrooms in here, a pretty good flush for us to harvest. It looks like they're a little bit past their prime a tiny bit. The caps are kind of folding in. They're still edible. They're still perfectly good to eat. So we've got a few tools with us. We've got the harvest bin to put our freshly harvested, cleaned mushrooms into, very important. And then we have this Oppenel mushroom knife, which is a really great knife for wild foraging, for mushroom cultivation, whatever you're doing. It's got a lock and you just twist it like that, open it up, lock it back up. This nice curved hook there. And we've got this little boar hair brush to brush off any dirt that might be on them. So we're gonna pick these mushrooms by hand and we're gonna trim them with the knife. 
You can see we've got some substrate, some of the casing on here. So we're just gonna kinda, you know, brush off what we can. Seeing this, not really a marketable part, we'll just cut that right off. And we'll put this in our harvest bin. Still got a little more on here. This brush does a really good job of getting this stuff off. So when you're pulling up the mushrooms, it's kind of a firm but gentle force. You'll feel them lift up. The trick is to have it lift up from the base and not kind of break any of your stems on the mushrooms. It's not what you want to do. So we're going to take this, just cut this bottom off like that. Perfect. There you go. So you may have noticed we're in a different spot right now. We're in the front of the North Spore fruiting rooms here. Um, this is our production facility. This is where we grow clean, do all those fun things with the mushrooms. Not upstairs today. So if you were to, for example, want to dry your mushrooms immediately after harvesting, there are a lot of good options for doing that. There are several really good dehydrators out there you can get. Uh, Excalibur makes a really, really high quality dehydrator that's really customizable. You can get a screen with a fan on it. That works really well. You could always use an oven on the lowest possible setting and just keep an eye on them, kind of shake them around a bit. So essentially we want our dried mushrooms to have the consistency of a cracker. You want to be able to break it and have it be a nice clean break. If it's too wet, it's going to be a little bendy. If you have it too wet and you store it, it's a really good way to grow mold. Obviously, that's not something we want to do. Pull it out of the dehydrator or however you're dehydrating it. Try not to leave it out for too long because it can reabsorb atmospheric moisture. All right, so this is our first flush, our first harvest. This one took about four weeks from start to finish. If you just keep taking care of your tub, it'll continue producing flushes of mushrooms, sometimes for a few months. Each progressive one after this is gonna be a little bit smaller and take a little bit longer. Uh, the tub is really done when you decide that it's done, when it's no longer worth your effort to maintain it, keep it humid, et cetera, et cetera. Then you can dump it out to start outdoor beds, use them as a base for compost. There's all sorts of really wonderful options that spent mushroom substrate has to offer. We're excited to cook up some of these oyster mushrooms for dinner tonight. If you stick around, we're gonna show you some of the optional upgrades you can give to your tub. Looking at these mushrooms, they're a bit conical, they're a bit tubular. Uh, the caps aren't as open and wide as we would like for an oyster mushroom. And that's indicative, most likely, of higher than maybe desired carbon dioxide levels in here. And the carbon dioxide is a natural effect of mushroom respiration. Adding an airflow system, which we'll show you how to do, and a lighting system could really have made these a little better, and we'll get into that in the next part of this video. If you like this video, be sure to give us a follow. We've got more coming for you. Check out our Instagram at North Spore Mushrooms, and be sure to check out our website, which is northspore.com. We've got a bunch of good content on there. We got blog posts, we got pictures, we got a great store, all sorts of good stuff for you to check out. So we're back upstairs. We've got this freshly cleaned out, and we're gonna start doing some modifications so you can really dial in your grow. So there's four things we're gonna consider when we're talking about mushroom cultivation. Temperature, humidity, carbon dioxide, and light. Temperature, we're indoors. We're not gonna really worry about that too much. If you wanted to alter your temperature, say it was a little too cold where you're growing, a seed germination mat works really well. You just throw that right underneath here. Humidity, we wanna make about an 80 to 90% humidity to ensure good mushroom pinning and growth. And we're gonna do that with a reptile or terrarium tank fogger. And for carbon dioxide, we're not gonna just rely on these. We're gonna actually add a small computer fan and that's gonna just purge the air and bring in fresh oxygen. For light, we're gonna add an LED strip onto the top. It's a dimmable one, it's really nice. Light isn't overly important, but it helps ensure good growth and color on your mushrooms. We're gonna start off with our air exchange system and this is how we're gonna regulate carbon dioxide in here. So what we're gonna use for that is this really simple computer fan. This one's great because it has a direct AC plug, which is gonna make this really simple. Here's a vent cover for the back of the fan. This is gonna be helpful to keep bugs and whatever from flying into our tub. This is mounting hardware for it. This is a cycle timer. Your fan's gonna plug in right there, and then this plugs into the wall. And as you adjust these knobs, it's gonna tell the fan when to turn on and how long, and when to turn off and for how long. 
If you want to, you can use a carbon dioxide meter like we have here. This is where the management kind of comes into play. So you can take this and you can read your carbon dioxide levels in your tank and dial it in that way to your perfect conditions. Or you could just use trial and error based on how the mushrooms look and dial it in just by looking at it. And then we have our drill. With a four inch hole saw, we're gonna use to drill a hole right here and mount our fan. Now I know I mentioned this earlier, but because we're working with a hard rigid plastic, you're gonna wanna go really slow with this and not put a lot of pressure on it. If you put pressure on it, you're probably gonna crack your tub. The hole saw is a little bit bigger than that fan, so we're gonna use some tape to just square it out. We wanna be pushing fresh air into this tub, so that means we're gonna flip it around like this, and we're gonna mount it on here like that. put this on here because this is going to be pulling air in through here so we want to have this on to prevent random things from flowing in there and messing up our fan. There we go. Rubber washers and some nuts. So our fan is all hooked up, it's mounted, and now it's plugged into this cycle timer. We'll plug this cycle timer right in. So this top one here is gonna tell you how long in seconds or minutes the fan is gonna be on, and the bottom one will tell you how long it stays off. So we'll move this to on for say 50 seconds, right about there, and we'll have it turn off for just five or so seconds for this example. And these are all gonna change depending on your needs um, which you will have to dial in as you make your system. So now it's on. I can feel that it's on right here. I'm feeling this fresh air coming in to the tub. I can turn it down a little bit too. So it just turned off right around 30 seconds. So now it's gonna stay off for five or so seconds. And there it is back on just like that. So obviously all of this is adjustable. You could have it turn off for 20 minutes. You could have it turn off for a whole hour or on for a whole hour. Uh, it's up to you. As you have the air going, it's gonna have a tendency to dry out your mushrooms, so you're gonna to need to adjust the humidity in response to that. So for that, we have this reptile terrarium fogger. It's got water in here, and it's got this hose right here. We're gonna put this hose into the tank. And then, to make it even better, we have this humidity regulator. So this has a probe right here. We're gonna put this end of the probe into the tub. This is gonna read our relative humidity inside the tub. This plugs into the regulator and the reptile fogger is gonna get plugged right into here while this goes into the outlet. So what this is gonna say is when it reaches a minimum humidity, this is gonna turn on. And when it reaches a maximum humidity, this is gonna turn off. So we're gonna start setting this up. This part's really easy. We're just gonna put this tube from the fogger kind of just through the polyfill on the side here. You know, take a look, make sure it's not full of polyfill. You can kind of stuff it back around. That looks great. It's inside. So now we can take our fogger, we can plug it into our humidity control, and then we can plug our humidity controller into a power supply. All right, let's turn the fogger on so it knows to run. So now we're gonna adjust this. Our relative humidity is 35% inside there right now. Too dry for mushrooms. And I have the upper limit here by holding it down set to 90, the lower limit set to 75. So it's supposed to run between 90, anything above 90% humidity, it's gonna turn off. Anything below 75% humidity, it's gonna turn on. So the third and final part to this today is 
the LED light strip, our light control. So mushrooms really don't need anything more than ambient light. They're not photosynthetic, but having enough light is going to help them grow in the right direction. And it's gonna help make sure they develop colors and aren't translucent and white and albino. This is a really simple little LED light bar. It's got a little button here that turns on and off and it's dimmable, which is a really nice feature. Now it's on and I can adjust the brightness by holding it down and then letting go and touching it again, getting dimmer. Again, mushrooms don't really need that much light. This is a nice setup, especially if you're doing this in a darker place where there isn't ambient light. So in a room like this, we don't really need this, but if you were doing this in a closet or a basement that was really dark or under your bed, this can be a really good feature and you can attach it to a timer so it turns on and off whenever you want, whether that's to match natural daylight cycles or to keep it as discreet as possible, the choice is really yours. And we're just gonna attach this to our lid with these little sticky pads that are gonna to attach to these metal discs that are attached to magnets. Let's mount our LED bar onto our lid. There's our lid. Just do this. So we have these little sticky double-sided things that we're gonna put on here to help attach it to our lid, just like that. And then we'll just stick it right on. Put some pressure under here, keep it firm. Turn it on. And there is our really cool, really high-tech monotub.